seemed. We would know peace. But it was not to be. For Diablo's essence lingers in the Black Soul Stone. I cannot destroy the stone. Nor allow its evil to remain within the heavens. And so it must be hidden. Even from the angels. I pray that it will be enough.
death angels. But for us, it's not just about epic heroes or evil villains. At the end of the day, it's about the promise of epic loot. So we've done a lot of work from the ground up to really re-envision what loot means in Diablo, and I'm really excited to show you guys what we have in store for you. But what is Reaper of Souls? Well, it's a feature-rich expansion, and the star of the hour is the Crusader, our yes. new class. He is the righteous warrior of wrath. He is your knight, not in shining, but in battle-scarred armor, and he brings our total of playable classes to six. We are also increasing the level cap to 70, which means that all the classes are getting new toys to play with in the shape of skills, passives, and runes. We are also continuing the story of Diablo 3 with a brand new act centered around Malfail and his quest to destroy and eradicate all humans from the face of Sanctuary. And it's up to the player to try to stop death. But we're not just stopping at a new class and a new act. We also rethought what the end game means for everyone. And here, we re our focus is to try to provide with players with as many different options to when it comes to the end game. The two I'm going to talk about today are what we call loot runs and the upgrade to the Paragon system. But before I do that, I want to invite Brian up here to tell you guys a little bit of the story behind Reaper Souls. Brian? I'm Ryan Kittergan, the lead writer of Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls. So at the end of Diablo 3, the hero had defeated the prime evil, Diablo, and trapped him in the Black Soul Stone. And Tyrael stepped forward to proclaim this new age of angel and man working together, an age of peace. And it seemed like nothing could go wrong. There was just this one little problem of the Black Soul Stone. With Diablo's essence trapped in it, it is the most powerful artifact in creation. And as you heard in the, in the cinematic, Tyrael didn't know if it could be destroyed or what would happen if it was, and so he decided to hide it away deep under sanctuary. And that was the smartest thing he could have done, because even Tyrael, with all of his wisdom, could not have foreseen the return of Malthael. So Malthael was, for long, the leader of the angels. He would lead them into combat, he was the architect of the eternal conflict, and he was the angel that all of the other angels would come to for wisdom and guidance. And then one day, he simply disappeared. Nobody knew where he went or if he would return. They sent his followers after him, his, his wisdom angels, and they never came back, and time went on. And now, Malthel has returned, and he's the angel of death. His followers are back, too, and now they are death angels, called Reapers. And Malthael has a very simple motivation. He wants to end the eternal conflict. To do so, he has to destroy all of the demons. And there's one really big demon faction out there that's still, still going strong in his eyes, and that's humanity. Because humans are born of angel and demon, and in his eyes, humans are demonic, and they've got to be destroyed. So he sends his reapers to Westmarch, which is the largest city in the West. It's the cultural, spiritual, and military center of the West. And it's the most powerful city on sanctuary. And so that's where the reaping will begin. And because Malfail is particularly insidious, his death angels go there, and they start killing people, and then resurrecting their corpses, and turning them into death constructs, which add to Malthael's army. And so he's able to turn the dead people of Westmarch against their neighbors and family and loved ones. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the look of Reaper of Souls. And I'd like to ask Christian to come up and talk about that. Hello, thank you for uh, coming. Uh, my name is Christian Leitner, I'm the art director on Diablo 3, and I'm really excited about speaking about our newest villain, Malthiel. Uh, of course, it's not every time we actually get to uh, design death itself, so this is always very exciting for us. Uh, we took some of uh, the visual cues from past lore, but ultimately for his expansion, we really want to make sure that we gave him his very distinct look, and really underscore the darker aspect of this new expansion. 
Now, some of the key elements we really wanted to focus in on as we were working on him was mainly, and first and foremost, his gaunt, dark, foreboding presence. That really implies and belies his incredible, immense power. He has angelic weapons, as you see in the twin sickles, that really he uses to slice his enemies. And he has this incredible power to literally drain his victims from their very souls. Now, also, he has his angelic armor. And really, every cue we took visually was to imbue it with skulls and the sickles that you see him using. And the goal there was to really make sure that he came across as death incarnate. His angelic wings are ethereal and skeletal. And really leave no doubt that this is the angel of death. Now, of course, this is not the only new villain that you will be facing in Sanctuary. What would, be, what would an awesome expansion be without new and exciting monsters? As Malfiel invades Sanctuary, he literally is converting his victims into monstrous constructs, as Brian mentioned. And they have to follow his every whim and desire. And every new characteristic and ability for these new monsters that you get to play with are as follows. The Seraph here that you see is a dark ranged caster. The Summoner of the Dead raises literally the armies around him to fight against you as you play your way through the expansion. The Executioner is a huge hulking monstrosity with powerful melee attacks. And last but not least, we have the Death Maidens, who, unlike the constructs you've seen before, are actually fallen angels, who are Malfiel's most trusted and deadly lieutenants. Of course, with all these new monsters, you need a perfect setting. And we're really excited about sharing with you West March. Now, as Brian mentioned, in Sanctuary, West March is literally the sprawling city of the West. And it's the perfect environment to host your struggle against these evil invaders. Visually, we really took a lot of cues from uh, the Gothic sort of Western European influences. And we really want to make sure that the, the evil vibe came through as strong as we could. We really want to get to the heart of what makes Diablo Diablo. Also, West March is fully randomizable and as a result provides seamless integration between exterior and interior uh, scenes. So as you play the game, you literally will be able to uh, seamlessly transition through interior spaces and exterior spaces. Now, of course, as you delve deeper into West March, you will encounter many of its deep and dark secrets. One of them being these terrifying death orbs. And really, at the heart of it all will be one question for you. Can you help and save West March from the evil clutches of Malthiel and his death readers? And to help us answer that question, we have Kevin. 